In this video, we will discuss the concept of hemostasis, which includes the definition, the components, and the negative feedback mechanisms in regulating blood glucose level. By definition, homeostasis is the physiological processes by which organisms maintain constant and balanced physical and chemical factors in internal environment. Homeostasis is a self-regulating process that will keep our body's biological system at a stable state while adjusting to the changes in the external environment. This means that no matter what is the changes taking place outside of our body, the physiological processes taking place inside our body will not be affected since the internal environment within our body is still under stable state due to homeostasis. Homeostasis allows organism to adapt in different environment or habitat as well as adapting to the changes taking place inside the external environment. This is because the homeostatic mechanisms will maintain the internal environment, thus ensure an optimal condition for biological processes, regardless of the state of the external environment. There are three main components of homeostasis, receptor, control center, and effector. These three components will help to maintain homeostasis condition within the living organism. Receptor is the specialized cells that detect stimulus. Stimulus refers to any changes in the control environment, for example, increase in our body temperature. Next, the receptor will send signal in a form of electrical impulse or chemical signal to the control center. Based on the signal received from receptor, the control center will evaluate the input and sets the range of values within which a control environment should be maintained. After that, the control center will send out signal of its own in a form of electrical impulse or chemical signal to the effector. Next, the effector or the organs that will bring out response will use the information provided by the control center to carry out the appropriate corrective action that will restore the internal environment back to homeostasis condition. Now, we will discuss the mechanisms involved in homeostasis. The mechanism is called negative feedback mechanism. What is negative feedback mechanism? It is the mechanism which reduces the intensity or the magnitude of the original stimulus. Another type of feedback mechanism is the positive feedback mechanism. For this mechanism, it enhances the intensity of the original stimulus. The positive feedback mechanism is not used in homeostasis since it amplify the original stimulus which will not help to bring back the condition back to original condition. An example of negative feedback mechanism is if there is a decrease in the blood pressure, homeostasis processes will cause the blood pressure to increase back to the normal level. Here we can see that the original stimulus is decrease in blood pressure. And then, the negative feedback mechanism will increase the blood pressure. This shows that the intensity of the original stimulus has been reduced. In another situation, if the stimulus involves increase in the blood pressure, the negative feedback mechanism will work to reduce the blood pressure back to normal. Overall, as long as the outcome of the feedback mechanism reduces the intensity of the original stimulus, it is known as the negative feedback mechanism. Next, we will discuss the negative feedback mechanisms to maintain the blood glucose level. The homeostasis of the blood glucose level is maintained by two cells which can be found inside the islet of Langerhans of the pancreas. The two types of cells are alpha cell and beta cell. 
Both of these cells will act as a receptor as well as the control center for the blood glucose level homeostasis mechanism. This graph shows the two different conditions of the blood depending on its glucose level. If the blood glucose level is higher than normal, this condition is known as hyperglycemia. In contrast, if the glucose level in the blood is lower than normal, the condition is called hypoglycemia. First, we will discuss what will happen during hyperglycemia. The condition will be detected by the beta cell of the islet of Langerhans. In response, beta cell will produce hormone insulin. Insulin is an example of a chemical signal instead of electrical impulse. Insulin will be distributed to the rest of the body, especially liver, muscle, and adipose tissue. Insulin will stimulate liver, muscle, and adipose tissue to increase uptake of glucose from the blood plasma. This means that the glucose in the blood plasma will decrease because it has been transported into muscle, liver, and adipose tissue. To allow continuous uptake of glucose into liver, muscle, and adipose tissue from the blood plasma, Insulin also increases the rate of conversion of glucose into a storage material called glycogen. This process is called glycogenesis, which is the generation of glycogen using glucose. Glycogen can be stored in large amount without affecting the water potential. This is how glycogen acts as storage material in animal. Next, insulin will also increase the rate of cellular respiration in liver and muscle cell, during which glucose will be broken down into ATP. Insulin also promotes conversion of glucose into fat in the liver and then will be stored in the adipose tissue. Because of these three processes, the glucose inside the muscle, liver, and adipose is always low. Hence, allow continuous uptake of glucose from the blood plasma into these tissues. In addition, insulin will also inhibit another process called glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Both of these processes will increase the blood glucose level. But, due to inhibition by insulin, these two processes will not take place. Thus, result in blood glucose level to decrease back to the normal level. During hypoglycemia or low glucose level in the blood, the condition will be detected by another type of cell which is alpha cell which will secrete hormone glucagon. Similar to insulin, glucagon will also be transported to the rest of the body, including liver and adipose tissue. At liver, glucagon will promote glycogenolysis, which is the breaking down of glycogen into glucose, while at adipose tissue, glucagon will promote gluconeogenesis, which involve hydrolysis of fat into glycerol and fatty acid, which then will be converted into glucose in the liver. In addition, glucagon will also inhibit glycogenesis. As a result, all these three processes increases the glucose level in the blood back to normal. That's it for the control of the blood glucose level by using negative feedback mechanism.